Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, students are still signing on. Uh, we're so happy to have Yao Aua this afternoon to help students to try to understand uh, filing taxes. And um, before we turn the time over to him, uh, I am Dr. Betty May, if we haven't met. Uh, I'm the program director for graduate student success at the Office of Graduate Education and Life. We are happy to be conducting professional development workshops for you. Um, so please go ahead and, and give us feedback uh, to let us know what you need. Um, for today, uh, to put in your questions, you can uh, type in chat. Uh, our speaker and I will be able to read them and we'll try to answer your question um, as much as we can. Um, so I, I know students are still signing on. Um, I don't want students to, to miss this important talk. Uh, and I'm sure you have been reading our weekly update. We'll continue to, to uh, read them for updated news and uh, workshops for this semester. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to turn the time over to Yao Aua, who is a doctoral student in the accounting department. Uh, Yao, you'll be able to share screen. Sure. Thank you, Dr. May. Let me try and get the presentation up. Um, So can you hear me and can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, welcome to the tax talk. Um, from some of the questions that uh, were sent in, I think what I realized is that we have a range of people, some that have filed taxes before and some that this may be their first time. So I, um, what I decided to do was just give a brief overview of the tax filing system. But before we do that, I wanted to uh, you know, make this caveat known that this is not tax advice. Uh, if you've done some research uh, on filing taxes regarding institutions, almost all institutions will have a caveat notice on there. So this presentation should be taken as a, it's not tax advice. And um, WVU or any institution at all cannot legally provide tax advice to any student or employee. So it's not only students. <laughs> uh, WVU is not being discriminatory against students. They can't even provide uh, legal tax advice for employees, uh, simply because everybody's tax situation is different. Um, I may have some investments that uh, I have to include in my taxes, the next person may not. So no institution is able to provide legal tax advice to any of their employees. Generally what institutions do is that, you know, they just give broad information and then you take that information and then to your tax preparer or advisor uh, as it applies to you. So, I think the best way to view this is just as an information session. Um, get as much out of it as you can. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, use that information in preparing your, uh, your taxes. Yao, before we go on, would you sure. mind uh, maximizing your screen? It's oh, right sure. Now. It's not fully projected. Okay. How do I do right. that? Uh, I, two ways, either go to the bottom, uh, right next to the, uh, the volume. You see next to the volume, there's a button. Uh huh. Yeah, just click on that button.
Let's see here. No, this I've, I've done this before some other way. Let me see. Kind of. If you go on the presenter mode, you can switch your screen. So um, if you're presented, if you have two screens, sometimes it doesn't show you. So go on presenter mode and you can switch it. Okay. Let me stop sharing for a second. Okay. And then where is the presenter mode? So uh, do you have two screens? No, I just have the one screen. Okay. So when you hit a uh, slideshow, on the top panel, you have the slides, hit slideshow from the start. And then um, if it's not full screen, you hit the presenter mode and it shows full screen to us. Okay, give me one second. Okay, you see that now? No share screen. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Okay. Sorry about that. No problem. Okay. So, like I said, I mean, I think we have a range of people uh, on this presentation. So, I'll just give some basic, basic uh, information on the on tax filing in the U.S. So, everybody who's heard of the IRS, Internal Revenue Service, this is the U.S. Tax Collection Agency. They collect. Uh, the return, the files that you send to them, they process it and if you are due a refund, they will issue a refund. In some cases, if you need to pay more, <laughs> they will alert you and then you have to pay. The tax return is the tax forms that you complete and send to the IRS. It's called a return because uh, you may get some money back. Uh, that's why we call it a tax return. Residency is your tax filing status. So you may be a US citizen or resident, you may be a non-resident alien, uh, or you may be a resident alien for tax filing purposes. And your residency determines the type of form that you use to file your tax return. So if you are a US citizen uh, resident, you use the 1040. If you are a non-resident alien, you use the 1040 and R. Um, your residency also determines the type of income that you are taxed on. Um, your residency may also impact on any tax treaty benefits that you have. The last two bullets uh, are related because if you are a non-resident alien, depending on the treaty between the US and your country, uh, some income can be excluded from your taxes. And again, this is actually one reason why institutions cannot provide tax advice to employees and to students. Because if you have people that are non-resident aliens or from other countries, and there are some treaty provisions that these people can benefit from, institutions cannot generally go into each treaty to see uh, what, what applies to who. That's why information is given out broadly, and then you take it and then you apply it yourself. So the form W-2 is a tax form that you get from your employer if you did any work. And I think for all of us on this call are graduate students, I think. And uh, I know I have already received my W-2 and I think most of us should have received our W-2 from uh, WVU by now. Um, form 1042S is a form that you may get if you received funding that's in excess of your tuition or if you received income that's exempt from withholding because of a tax treaty. This is not very common, but it does apply every once in a while. Uh, from 1098T is the tuition statement, and you may get this if you receive a scholarship, grant or fellowship support, uh, and the total sum of that scholarship, the grant or fellowship is usually reported in box five. 
I just received mine yesterday. So this is just a tuition statement. Most of the time, you don't include this in your tax returns, but it's showing you what your institution has reported to the IRS. Um, we'll, as we'll see further in the presentation that the scholarship grant or fellowships that you receive are tax-free. That's why you don't include this in your tax returns. So, but you know, most of the time what I do is I just make a photocopy of it, uh, give it to my tax preparer, and he comes back to tell me that he doesn't need it. So, so I just wanted to expand on this notion of uh, resident versus non-resident for tax purposes. And I should have said up front that I think uh, the presentation is a little bit geared towards uh, non-residents or foreign students, because most US uh, students are familiar with the tax system. So this presentation is slightly geared more towards foreign students uh, who may be facing this for the first time. So resident for tax purposes, uh, relates to tax purposes only, and does not mean you are a US resident by any other definition. So, and this is very important. So a person can be deemed a resident for tax purposes based on your presence in the US. Um, and if you are deemed a US resident for tax purposes, again, as the first bullet points out, it does not mean you, you are a resident for any other reason. It's just for tax purposes only. Again, residency for tax purposes is not the same as residency for tuition purposes or residency for status or green card purposes. So some of you may be aware that if you are a resident, a West Virginia resident, for example, you pay in-state tuition. If you are a non resident of West Virginia, you pay out of state tuition, which can be slightly higher than the in-state tuition. So what we are talking about, residency for tax purposes is none of these, right? It's just uh, a tax term that the IRS uses. So you are a resident for tax purposes does not mean that you qualify as a resident for you know, East tuition, or as is generally known when we talk about green cards. And generally, most students on an F or J visa are considered non-resident aliens for tax purposes during the period that's the first five years of their stay in the US. So again, most students fall under these two types of visas, the F or the J. So if you have one of those, the at least the first five years, unless you have a change in status, the first five years you are considered a non-resident alien for tax purposes. So then the big question becomes, since we are all graduate students on here and receive stipends, are we required to, or are you required to file a tax return? The answer generally is yes. So, even for F and J visa holders who were in the US for only part of a prior tax year, I guess I should have explained upfront that um, the tax year we are in 2022, so I'm just going to use 2022 as an example. In 2022, the tax year relates to the prior year, so 2021. So, if you were in the US for part of 2021, let's say you came in the fall, uh, started school at the end of August or beginning of September but you did receive some stipend and the school issues issues uh, a W-2 to you, you are still encouraged to file a tax return. So for F and J visas uh, who were in the US for only part of the year, you are still encouraged to file a tax return. And you are encouraged to file a return even if you made no income in 2021. And you are also encouraged to file even if you qualify as an exempt individual. And I've given some resources at the end 
uh, of the presentation where some of these terms are explained, like an exempt individual, for example. Uh, those resources will link you to the IRS website where some of these terms are explained. So yes, we encourage everybody to file a tax return. Then the question becomes, why should you? Um, filing a return is in your best interest if you earn money, regardless of your status and the amount that you earned. If you don't file, you may lose a refund payment that comes to you. Um, most of the policy is driven off of the tax returns. So the only thing that comes to mind is coronavirus, for example. If the government is issuing, uh, for lack of a better word, money to people based on uh, coronavirus or based on some other reason, how it's done is generally through those who filed the tax return the prior year. So either you pay too much money and you need to file to get a refund, or if there's a government policy that money is being sent out, is it will be driven based off on the returns that were filed the prior year. So you are encouraged to file. For visa holders, uh, your, the terms of the visa also require compliance with US laws, which may include the obligation uh, of filing a US tax return. So the visa that was issued to you requires you to comply with all laws. <laughs> and you know one of the laws of the land is that you have to file a return. Also, important changes to your visa terms may require proof that you have filed a return. So if you are here, and again, if you are a non-resident uh, foreign student and you want to go home and come back, uh, if you are not given multiple entry visa and you have to go seek uh, a visa again, it may come up, they may ask uh, whether you filed a tax return if you seek re-entry. But the most important thing is the last bullet point, uh, if you seek to change your residency status. So let's say you finish school, or for whatever reason, you have an employment, or you want to change your, res uh, your residency status from the F visa to, let's say, permanent residency status. One of the requirements of that is uh, that you've been filing your taxes. So again, you know, this cannot be stressed enough. Even if you made no money, even if you made little money, you are encouraged to file your tax returns. And I wanted to emphasize here that if you made too much money, some people try to cheat on their tax returns in terms of reporting or uh, less than what they actually made. One of the things that you should know is that the W-2 that was sent to you or you know, by WVU, or if you happen to work off campus, any other institution, any money that is paid to you is reported to the IRS. So uh, the, the amount shown on the W-2 is what uh, West Virginia University paid to you. If you worked elsewhere, unless of course you worked under the table, which I don't wanna get, <laughs> I don't wanna get there, uh, but if you work elsewhere and the employer, the other person issued you a W-2, you have to combine that W-2 with what you receive from West Virginia University to file your taxes. And so the question is, what's the timeline for filing taxes in 2022? Uh, again, by now we should all have received our W-2 forms. And generally the tax filing deadline is April 15th of every year. But then at the beginning of the year, if the April 15th falls on the weekend, for example, the IRS will come out and issue tax filing day. And this year they've done that. I think April 15th falls on the Friday, if I remember correctly when I checked. Um, and the IRS has said that this year, the deadline will be April 18th, which is the following Monday. So, uh, we have our W-2s now, we can go ahead and file now, or if you want to wait a little bit, you are gathering other documents. The deadline is April 18th. Generally, you can file for an extension 
Uh, but for most of us on here, if your return is not complicated, you might as well get it done and over with. Um, unless you have you know, income from other sources where you don't have all your documents ready. And uh, then you may go ahead and file for an extension based on what your tax advisor tells you. So the other big question that applies to all of us here is that whether scholarships on the end or fellowships or grants are taxable. And the answer to that is generally no. Uh, scholarships, fellowship grants is generally tax free if you are a candidate for a degree at uh, an educational institution. So what does it mean to be tax free? It means it's not included in your W-2, right? So if you look on the W-2, the money, if you have scholarship or grants, that's not on the W-2. There are other conditions that apply to, uh, you know, having these scholarships and grants being tax-free. You know, for example, the scholarship or fellowship must not exceed your qualified education expenses. So if, you know, West Virginia University, for example, gives me a scholarship or a fellowship of 100000 dollars a year and my the qualified education expenses is a, is defined by the irs okay so if my qualified education expenses is sixty thousand, and i have excess of forty thousand dollars going into my pocket that forty thousand is going to be taxable generally no institution uh gives scholarships or fellowships that exceed the qualified education expenses right if anything at all they may give you a stipend which most of us do get and then that stipend you have to pay taxes on um, so and then you may receive a form 1098t that as i mentioned earlier lists the amounts of qualifying uh, education expenses that you received which is reported in box five i received mine yesterday and in box five it explicitly, explicitly states the amount of uh, scholarships that I received in the past year, in 2021. Again, uh, the form 109080 is information purposes only. You don't necessarily include that amount in your taxes when you file. Why? Because the first bullet point on there says those scholarships or grants are tax-free, so you don't include them. So then the, best, the next big one is stipends. Are they taxable? And this is generally yes. Uh, stipends are scholarships that are taxable. They are payments for which no services are rendered or required. And they may include payments for travel, if you are giving money for computer, for example, or if you are giving money for living expenses, room and board, etc. You know, that type of stuff is uh, taxable to you. Because why? If you look up the de definition of qualified education expenses, these things do not fall under that. That's why it's taxable to you. So for all students, domestic and foreign, the stipends is reported to you on form W-2. This is generally the main form that you need to file your taxes. Again, as I mentioned earlier, for some foreign students, uh, stipends may be reported to you on form 1042S, but this is, you know, from what I can tell, this is not very common. So as I mentioned earlier, um, tax, there are tax treaties between the US and a number of countries. And within those treaties, uh, citizens of that country that are present in the US uh, can exempt some income from their US taxes. In much the same way, uh, if a US person is in that country and earns income, uh, that person may earn some treaty benefit in filing their taxes in that country. So it's just uh, vice versa. Um, so you may want to consult your tax treaty. It's, for most students, this really is not something that comes into play, but just be aware of it. Um, and most of the tax preparation software out there, if that's what you use, factor this into consideration anyway, in terms of the questions that they ask you upfront. 
uh, in preparing your taxes. So be don't try to be cute. Be very upfront in uh, you know when you are filling out those the software to file your taxes and uh, be honest, answer correctly. And if you have any benefits, it will just run it and give you the benefits. And I'm not sure in uh, slideshow mode whether I was going to click on this and send us to the IRS website, but I get, there are links in here that when you do get a slide, you can click on it and then it will send you to the IRS website where you can see the publication. And I think on this particular page, there's also a link to the treaties. So you can click on it and then look at the treaty that the US has with your country uh, if you you know, if you are interested. So who should you use to uh, help you file your taxes? The IRS recommends that you use a qualified tax professional to prepare your taxes. Again, there is a link here uh, that when you click on it, it takes you to the IRS's website and then explains you know, the people and the qualifications that you should be looking for, right? So qualifications, qualified people include enrolled agents, certified public accountants and attorneys. Um, like I said, if you click on this and you go on the website, it's, there are links that tells you what you should be looking for. And the one thing that I was talking to somebody that brought to my attention was that, you know, most immigrant communities uh, are a great resource in finding qualified professionals who understand certain treaty aspects that applies to nationals of that community, right? Uh, so if there is a big immigrant community, this probably applies to uh, people of Indian descent and people of Chinese descent and some other countries. Uh, generally, you have people that are qualified uh, that will help you in filing your taxes. So if you know, you know people in those communities, you may contact them and ask them uh, about getting you somebody to help you with your taxes. But generally, just the tax preparation softwares, especially the one that uh, I'll be talking about shortly, uh, does a good job. For most of us, our returns are very, very simple. <laughs> it's not complicated at all. Uh, so the task software should be able to handle it. Unless, of course, I know I had a student ask me once, they were trying to uh, invest in real estate and uh, the stock market here. So how that affects their taxes. So if you are in that category, then maybe you should seek uh, somebody who's a professional. But for most of us, I think the tax software should be able to help us. Um, so I was just looking at this. I differentiated this tax services for non-residents and tax services for residents. Really, I think it applies both ways. So these differences really don't, you know, they don't matter that much. But again, all these blue links here, uh, the volunteer income tax assistance is listed on the IRS's page uh, where there are these vital sources uh, resources, different parts of the country. So you can look it up, the one that's close to you and call them as needed. The IRS also provide telephone tax advice. If you click on it, it will take you to the website where you can get a phone number to the extent you need it and then call them and then ask them a question. Uh, the one thing that, before I get to Glacier, these other services, stable tax, h &R Block, Jackson Hewitt, and IRS also has IRS free file, but I think that's mainly for US residents. And if you are a foreign student, it, it may not necessarily be uh, the best one to use. The, in researching for this presentation, the one thing that kept coming up in other schools is this Glacier or Glacier tax prep. Uh, and I think they have, set themselves up really to uh, as a tax prep software for foreign students and foreign researchers that come to the US. Um, so 
if you are not familiar with it, it's something that, at least from what I see, is uh, geared towards foreign students. And when you click on the link, it takes you to their website, and it's only $39 to use the service, okay? <laughs> so um, I, I don't want to say it comes highly recommended because I've never used it, but from researching for this presentation, uh, that's the one thing that I've, you know, I saw on most college websites that recommends their students to use. And I actually did see that some institutions have entered into contracts with this software company where the software is provided freely to their students. Okay, and if you go on their websites, they actually have a, they do advocate that you should contact your foreign student office and tell them to get into a contract with them so they can help you out. I don't know if the Blue VU does that. Maybe it's something that, uh, you know, folks on here can look into, whether this is something that the school can enter uh, into an agreement with and provide free service for foreign students. But uh, it's, it seems to be the software that most institu institutions recommend their students to use, their foreign students to use to file their taxes. Another resource that when I get out of uh, the tax, the presentation mode, I think I'll click on and show you is that Berkeley has a series of short videos that introduce people to uh, tax filing in the US and is very, very beneficial. Uh, you can Google it on YouTube, but the links are here. It will take you directly to the Berkeley website. And, you know, it's just like three minutes long each and there are about four or five of them. You can just watch it and it's very informative. And actually Berkeley is one institution that has an agreement with, I think this Glacier software company where they provide the services free for their students. These other resources, uh, if you want to understand more of uh, scholarships, grants, and other grants, and their taxability, uh, tax topic number 421, if you click on the link there, it will take you to it directly. Publication 970 is the main thing that most institutions look to, or is the main document um, that talks about educational benefits, tax benefits for education. So you click on it, uh, I'm sure any question that you have, you'll probably find an answer in there. And then there is a tax benefit, benefits for education information center. If you are not familiar with the form 1040 NR, the NR just means non-resident. Uh, uh, that link on there will take you to the form directly. So for foreign students, this is the uh, tax form that you need. If you're a US resident, the form that you will use is 1040, just the 1040. If you're a foreign student, the form that you need is the 1040 NR. And then the last link is uh, the instructions to the form 1040 NR. So again, on the IRS website, uh, you will find information on uh, individuals that are exempt from taxes. Generally, most foreign students are exempt from tax the first five years that they are here. Why? Because you are here as a student and you, know, you are not expected to be working. But if your institution is giving you a stipend, right? for whatever reason that's taxable, that takes you out of this exempt status, okay? So don't look at it as just because you are a foreign student, you are exempt. If your institution has issued you a W-2, you have to file tax, <laughs> okay? Even though under the big umbrella of an exempt individual, you may qualify, okay? Uh, these are some of the nuances. The general recommendation, is that file taxes. If even you earn $10, file your taxes because the tax return or the question of whether you file taxes can come up in different ways down the line uh, and you don't just don't wanna be caught up. 
topic number 851, resident and non-resident aliens also uh, provides more information on who qualifies as a resident and who qualifies as a non-resident alien. And then publication 519, US Stats Guide for Aliens. Also, there is a link there. There are lots of information that the IRS puts out. It may be confusing for, you know, if you say you are, unless you really want to be like a tax person, right? It may be confusing for you to say you're going through all of this. Uh, as far as I can tell, if your only source of income is from West Virginia University, what's the uh, W-2 that West Virginia University issued to you, then I would just use a software like Glacier or any other software, any other resource that you're comfortable with, and then just go through the steps, step by step, and then fill it out um, and just become familiar with it. Most of this other stuff is when you have like a technical question that you want to look up. Uh, and then you can use these resources to answer that question. So we did receive a number of questions. That's the end of the presentation, but we did receive a number of questions that people sent in. And one thing that, you know, just, just kept coming up is what's the difference between deductions and credits, right? So in the simplest form, a deduction reduces the amount of your income that is subject to tax, okay? So if your W-2 says you earn 20,000 for the year, and for whatever reason you qualify for a $3,000 deduction, okay? Your amount of income that's subject to tax is going to be 17,000. That's a deduction, okay? And again, for whatever reason, you know, uh, a tax credit on the other hand reduces the amount of income tax you may have to pay. Okay, so you may get a refund if the credit reduces your tax to less than zero. So deductions are taken into consideration upfront, credits are taken into consideration on the back end, right? Um, so if after you file your taxes and you know, it shows that um, you owe, let's say $500 that you have to pay to the IRS. And if for whatever reason you forget a credit that you could take and you take that credit, uh, the child tax credit, for example, right? Uh, you, the amount that you owe may flip. Instead of 500, you may end up getting a thousand dollars from the IRS. So that, that's just the difference between deductions and credits. Uh, we did receive some other questions that, uh, Dr. May, do you want me to go through them or? Sure, if you want to, yeah. Sure, okay. So then these are just the ones that you sent me? Yes. Okay. So the first one that I see here is that I have the provost fellowship and a stipend, which are paid differently. And I don't know how to deal with the taxes and documentation. So again, fellowships and stipends are not taxable, right? So you may receive the total amount of the provost fellowship and stipend, uh, the provost fellowship on your 1098T. Your stipend, I think, will be reported to you on form W-2, okay? So you should go with what's reported on the form W-2 don't make things any more difficult for yourself in trying to figure out what you need to report to the IRS, <laughs> okay? Um, what this institution has issued to you on your Form W-2 is what you should use to file your taxes. And I hope that's clear. Um, the second question is, IRA portion selling for tuition fees, how can this be shown? I don't understand this. IRA portion selling for tuition. So I guess the person is trying to say that they sold an IRA uh, to pay for their tuition. And this is this falls into one of the areas where we can't give tax advice, okay? You'll probably have to consult your individual uh, tax person to help you on it. Another one, my fellowship stipend is deposited into my account pre-taxes. 
And then every year I have to pay a lot of tax when I file. Is there a way to have the IRS and the states of West Virginia take taxes before I file? So, you know, I think when we all first came here, there is an office in the ground floor of the mountain lair. And I don't know the name of that office, where you go in and then fill out your W-2 form. Okay, so if you think that enough taxes are not being taken out of uh, your paycheck, I will recommend you look up that office, stop by there, explain it to them uh, that you wanna fill out a new W-2 and then go with whatever recommendation they give you, okay? Um, just taxes in general as an international student, uh, especially regarding federal income tax and tax return. I mean, I think we covered that in the presentation and I hope it helps. Um, I typically file through table tax. Some of the questions they ask about income and scholarships is, is confusing compared to the questions they ask from the 1098T. For example, I received 20,000 in my graduate assistantship. Therefore, I only received closer to 15,000 of that money as actual income. So does the whole 20,000 still get taxed or only the refunded amount? Again, just go with what was reported to you on your W-2, okay? Uh, don't try to make it any more complicated. The institution has reported the amounts paid to you to the IRS, and what they have reported to the IRS is what's shown on your W-2, okay? So don't look any further <laughs> beyond that. Uh, the income you earned is what's on your W-2 to the extent you only earn income for, from West Virginia University. If you earn income from other sources, that's a whole different question. But if you only earn income, income from West Virginia University, go with what's on the W-2, okay? Uh, I'm in my first year, so I'm looking forward to know about taxes. How does it work? Hopefully the presentation did, did help a little bit. Um, is the tax filing process any different for Indian citizens? I have heard from a payroll employee that it is. So I'm interested in knowing that. Um, the process is not any different for any particular person from any country. The only thing that may be different is the treaty benefit that you stand to gain. Okay, so if the, you know, the US Indian tax treaty does provide some benefits for people of Indian descent, then yes, you do stand to get that benefit, okay? Um, other than that, the process generally is applicable to everybody. Uh, and so to the extent of any benefits that you may get from the US Indian tax treaty, that's something that you know, I cannot opine on. You have to talk to your tax advisor or the person who prepares your taxes. Um, are tuition waivers received with a GA, GRA, GTA position considered taxable income on the federal or state level? Again, go with what's on the W-2, okay? Um, actually, this brings up something interesting. I probably should have mentioned this. You need to file taxes on the federal level, and then you also need to file taxes on the state level. Okay, since we are all in West Virginia University, uh, the only state that's applicable here is the state of West Virginia. And the tax prep software or whoever is helping you prepare your taxes, are they, if you're using a software, at the end of it, it will just print out the state tax return also for you. So it all falls under one. It will print out the federal one for you to mail to the IRS and then it will print out the state's one also uh, with addresses on them where you have to send it to the state, okay? How do the graduate assistantship taxes vary for students who are considered residents for tax purposes? So again, I think I covered this uh, in the presentation. Uh, if you are a resident, if you are a non-resident, graduate assistantship is what's reported to you on your W-2, go with that. The only difference here 
for a resident is that you'll be using 10, uh, form 1040, okay? Uh, and then for non-residents, you'll be using 10, uh, form 1040NR. So uh, those, that's the only difference I can think of, okay? Does the Glacier Tax Prep software allow international students to state their dependence while filing for taxes? I would think so. I have never used it, but any tax prep software worth its salt is going to ask you about your dependence. <laughs> so uh, even though I've never used it, I, I, I think definitely it should ask you about your dependence, yeah. I've used table tags before and it does ask you about your dependence, so. Company tuition reimbursement tax implications. So I suspect this person works for a company uh, and he or she does get some tuition reimbursements um, from their company. There's, there's a term that is, is is it flexible benefits, something like that that's escaping me right now? And I think tuition reimbursements may fall under uh, flexible benefits. But if you Google it, uh, it should come up and take you to the IRS website. Uh, but since this is very personal to you, it's really something that I cannot opine on just to give you, you know, uh, the direction that look up. I think it's flexible benefits. Uh, if if I'm correct, um, and it should come up, and you should know what you do, or just talk to your tax advisor. Um, when I have the scholarship tax form, I think it's 1099. Do I use the value listed as scholarship and grants received, or do I have to split it in half because the form goes by academic years? don't do anything with any amount listed on the form 1099, okay? The 1099 is provided to you for information purposes only. So your scholarships, your fellowships that you received are all tax-free, provided it's given to you and qualifies as a qualified education expense, okay? And if you look on form 1099, anything that's listed under box five qualifies as a qualified education expense and is tax-free. So you are not expected to include that in your income when you are filing your taxes, okay? The only amounts that should be included on your tax return are what's shown on the form W-2. I had got an emergency grant last year in October 21. Does this account as income? If yes, will it be added to W-2 form or should I file it separately? If you did get an emergency grant in 2021 and it does account as income, yes, definitely it will be included in your W-2, okay? So go with what's reported on your form W-2. You are not expected to try to sit down and figure out what's income to you and what's not income to you. Whatever w, uh, West Virginia University paid to you that qualifies as income will be reported on the form W-2, okay? So don't make it any more complicated. Don't try to figure out anything else. Go with what's reported to you on your form W-2. Yeah. Where, and, yes, yeah. go ahead. May I inject? Uh, since sure. you're talking about a W-2, there is a question in the chat. W-2 comes in my WVU email, question mark, or should I download through portal? Um, I get mine through, I got mine through the mail. And I think you can download it through the portal. I'm not 100% sure on that. Maybe you can speak to that. Yeah, you, you can download it. I, actually, yeah, it should come in uh, in the mail, right? Correct? Yes, I received mine through the mail, yeah. Right, right. So I, I'm waiting for mine too. <laughs> so okay. um, I think, yes, it will come in the mail and you can download it 
yeah on the portal yeah yeah that's what somebody had said that uh they looked up this on the portal i've never done that yeah. so if you have a means to look it up you can look it up on a portal and just download it from there also but generally a copy should be sent to you by mail yes. i received mine already and i received my 1098t also already so okay okay um since I'm reading questions, might as well read you this one too. The status what counts for filing is the one you had last year, question mark, 2021. For example, if you're in the process to change your status at the end of this year. So because you're reporting last year's taxes, so the mm -hmm. status should should only be uh, uh, or refer to what it was last year. Right. You, you know, I will put this under the umbrella of it's really applicable to you. So talk to your tax advisor, you know, because I, I really don't know what your situation is. Right. Uh, so I think the best advice will be for them to talk to their tax advisor if they had a change in status. Right. Because it can become a little bit complicated if you are. Uh, you were a non-resident for the first half of the year, for example, right? And then you became a resident in the second half of the year, right? That will mean that depending on your situation, in the first half of the year, when you were a non-resident, you could qualify for treaty benefits to the extent that is applicable, okay? Um, so, my advice there is for the person to just talk to their tax advisor if they had a change in status. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The only the only difference where it really you don't you know I, I for lack of you know you don't need to consult is just if for example you change from married to uh, or single to married for example right. Uh, it's the, the forms are not going to ask you when you became married. So if you were single for the first half of the year and got married for the second half of the year and you and your spouse are filing together, you just go with married, you know, uh, instead of trying to break it down, I was single for the first half of the year and married for the second half of the year. The suggestion will be that you just go with married. Other than that, any other question that relates to residency for tax purposes, I will recommend that you talk to your tax advisor. Okay, um, there's another question now. Is emergency grant under American Rescue Plan of 2021 taxable? Um, I think this is a grant that we all got. And I don't think that it's taxable, even though the software should ask you about it, you know, and you can input it in there. And if it's taxable, it will take it into consideration. If it's not, it's, uh, I mean, if it's taxable, I think we should have received some, something from the IRS that you should include this amount in your, in your income. I haven't received anything. Uh, so I don't think those amounts are taxable, but don't quote me on it, <laughs> please. Right. Uh, okay, there's another, oh, there's a thank you, okay. So on your side, questions? Uh, yes, so I have a couple more to go through. Yeah. Um, okay, so this again, where and how to start the process as an international student, I think we touched on that. How to correctly file taxes for international students, we touched on that. Will this be recorded? I think it's being recorded. How to fill out the tax return forms, we touched on that. If you are using a software, it's just a, uh, an iterative process, step by step. The first step, it will ask you a question, you answer that question, and then if you are doing this for the first time, and then ask you a next question, and you just keep answering the questions, and then it will take you through it itself. Um, I am an international student, completely new to filing taxes. I would love it if they shed some light on specific things international students are expected to do. So I think I've touched on some of those things. Um, the, the only thing I will add again is this whole treaty issue, but from what I can gather, that uh, Glacier software is very good for non-residents or for foreign students. Uh, 
and I'm only saying this because in my research, I saw that a number of schools do provide that to their students. So that's the only reason why I keep bringing it up. By no means should you, you know, <laughs> say you're going to use that software because I talked about it. You know, if you have other options, definitely go for them. Okay, I'm just saying that that's what I, I saw out there. Um, and again, if you click on that link, it says it's only $39. So tax breaks for students, exemptions. How do I file the income I receive from my fellowship? So to the extent that there's a tax break for students, it's just that your scholarship and fellowship is not taxable. Again, that's what's reported to you on form uh, 1098T. So you don't include that in your income. It's that form is provided to you for information purposes only. What should be included in your income is what's shown on your form W2. I cannot stress that enough. That seems to be a question that people are asking a lot. Uh, your fellowships and scholarships are not taxable to the extent that they qualify as uh, qualified education expenses. To the extent that is listed in box five on the 1098T. I received mine yesterday. I'm not going to include that amount in my taxes, okay? The only thing that I'll be filing is what's shown on my W-2. So broadly, scholarships, fellowships, and grants are not taxable. They are tax-free if they qualify as qualified education expenses. Uh, any other amounts that the school has paid to you that's taxable will be included in what the school issues to you on your form W-2. Okay. Do I need to pay to declare my taxes? If you file and at the end of the day, you need, you owe and you have to pay something, generally the process is that you write a check and then you include it with your tax return and then you file it with the IRS, okay? For most of us, I don't see, well, this is just a caveat. Just for most of us, I don't see anybody owing, okay? Um, but if you do owe for whatever reason, you just have to include a check with the amount and then send it to the IRS. If you don't and you owe, guess what? It's going to pile, uh, interest and penalties are going to pile up on it, <laughs> okay? And you don't want those interest and penalties to keep piling up. So just if at the end of the day you file your taxes and whoever did it for you or the software is saying you owe X amount, just include a check for the X amount and send it to the IRS. Okay. What are the steps to declare my taxes through online or mail? So some of these softwares will ask you for a bank account uh, at the end of the whole process where if you are due money from the IRS, the money goes directly into your bank account. Um, I have done it. If you are not comfortable, you can just print out the form and then uh, mail it to the IRS. And if you are due a refund, the IRS will send you a refund, okay? Who in the college can help with my questions? That I'm not sure. <laughs> there, there are, uh, I saw in my research that some is generally most institutions or all institutions are not going to give you specific tax advice. They may have an office that points you to certain resources that you can use. Okay. As to where that office is, I'm not sure for WV, but I think that may be one of the reasons why we are having this tax talk in the first place. So, Dr. May, if you have something else to add to that, there is a WVU Tax Services. If you type taxservices.wvu.edu, there are um, a list of resources. I actually was just on there during your presentation, and I did mm -hmm. see the Glacier Tax Prep information for international students. But I don't know if that page was not updated or what. Uh, it still has 2019, 2020 information on there. Okay. So you, uh, if you need help, I think international students, there is a phone number on that page that you could call uh, or email tax at mail.wvu.edu and ask them about the Glacier tax prep information. 
Oh, that's that's I, I hope it's provided for free. That's right. Good. Yeah, yeah. It used to be, I think. Um, but the information on that page still says 2019 and 2020. Okay. So I don't know, maybe they have just not updated it or whether they, they're still continuing that service for international students, but definitely something to look into. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. Um, again, I will, you know, I will highly recommend that you, if you are new to this process, and if even you are not new to the process, go through the link uh, that links to Berkeley's website, those short videos that they have out there. And then just familiarize yourself with them. And There's then, one uh, more question in the chat. If um, sure, I yeah. may read it to you. Sure. I'm a, I'm a new PhD student who resumes this year, January 2022. Can I file taxes before April 18, since I will be receiving stipend that covers my living expenses from the university from from now till April? That's the so. Question. So if I understand the question, the person is a PhD student starting in January this year? Yeah. Okay, so the tax filing season is for amounts earned in 2021. Okay, so if before this person started a PhD program, they earned income anywhere else uh, in 2021, then they should file taxes for that amount. But if they are receiving, or if they just started at WVU in January of this year, any amounts that they receive that's taxable will be reflected in their 2022 W2, which will be next year, mm -hmm. okay? So for this person, I don't think they received any W2 from West Virginia University yet. Right. So if you have not received the W2 from West Virginia University, then to the extent that's the only source of income you have, you don't have to file tax, uh, at least uh, you did not earn any income, okay? Uh, but if you earn income outside of West Virginia University in 2021, then yes, you have to file. But you, if you are just starting here this year, uh, nothing that you are receiving will go into your 2021 tax return. I mean, I, 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 th I hope that's clear. Okay. One more question here. If cryptocurrency was sold at a profit, how to approach this? Uh, <laughs> I guess you know what I'm going to say to this. I have no clue what cryptocurrency is. Uh -huh. um, I've heard of it, you know. Um, this is something that is just generally applicable to whoever the person asking the question is. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So in chat, I typed... Uh, Thanks to a student who sent it. Okay, tax services.wu.edu, the uh, International Glacier Tax Prep Information link there. Uh, the students that looks like we can get it for free. Oh, that's great. So I send that, yeah, to everyone that. Um, so other questions in the in the chat concerns about recording. Um, so once this has been downloaded, um, we will, I'll, I'll talk to our presenter, uh, but we can send it to you for sure. And uh, we'll send a PowerPoint presentation to you. Okay, just before we sign off, let me just show you guys what okay. I'm talking about here. Hopefully this comes up. Are you seeing this? Yes. Okay, yeah. So income tax filing is only three minutes. There are some FAQs here, tax residency, resident on resident tax forms, federal tax return, state tax return. Uh, it's very informative. So like I said, just uh, if you have a few minutes, just look at it, mm -hmm. um, it may help. So that's it on my end. Thank you. I hope this was beneficial. Um, yes. yes, this is very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, Students, as I told you, um, once we've downloaded the recording, yeah, um, I will send that information to you and also the PowerPoint. Um, I would like to just to make an announcement of our next uh, professional development workshop on Friday, February 25th at noon. Uh, we'll use the lunch hour to do this. Um, 
It will be, the topic will be a guide to student research and navigating the IRB process. So if you are starting to do research, but don't know where to begin, uh, I welcome you, okay, to sign up um, for this workshop. It will happen on the 25th at noontime, and you can sign up through a weekly update that we, that you receive every Monday morning. If there are no further questions, let's thank Yao for being here and for helping us uh, trying to understand the complicated process. Uh, and then I hope to see you next time uh, at our next workshop. Have a good evening, everyone. All right, thank you, goodbye.